car rental staff, what is your returned vehicle horror story? I worked at a car dealer that uses the same guidelines as a dealer's like CarMax, one owner low mileage cars from rental companies and off lease cars. When cars used to come in for service, we would loan them a similar car to theirs off the lot and let them take it with a dealer tag until their vehicle was finished. We gave one lady a Jeep Grand Cherokee while her non-Grand Jeep Cherokee was in for service. This is a slightly bigger vehicle than she was used to driving. Now remember, these cars have to go back onto the lot once they're done being driven. So every customer was warned that every vehicle should be treated with care. This lady didn't get that memo. After a week of driving a free loaner she returned the jeep complaining of the gas mileage and that she had the hardest time parking it. We just took it as she really didn't like driving it. Boy were we wrong. The whole passenger side had giant scratches going down the side. It looked like she had gone through the woods. Some of it was yellow so it looked like she clipped one of those yellow pillars in parking lots. The interior was another horror story. The entire trunk area looked like a bed of a landscaper's truck. Dirt and mud everywhere. Detailing took days to clean it out. Best part? The leftover seafood containers left under the front seats. The car sat for a week after being returned BC of the exterior damage, giving time for the seafood to stew in the heat. If anyone doesn't know what cooked seafood starts to smell like unrefrigerated environments for long period of time, it smells exactly what it is, a rotting carcass. The detailers weren't really able to get that smell out of it after the various amount of harsh chemicals. That jeep ended up going to auction rather than back on the lot rather than trying to fix and sell it for a profit. They stopped loaning out lot vehicles after that one. They flagged her for future service and with the rental company we then outsourced our loaner cars too. I worked at a rental agency shortly after college, and while this isn't gross, this particular story stuck to me. So, very occasionally people will rent cars and then just like, not give them back. You can call them over and over and leave messages, and you can try to hit their card on file as the costs mount but as you can imagine, this type of person ends up having their card decline fairly quickly. Rental charges are mounting and the person is mere, so the main concern of the branch becomes getting the car back. So here's one of the more adventurous parts of the job. Eventually, you have to repo the car. One such time, we basically staked out this guy's house until he left with someone else, leaving the rental car in the driveway. The branch manager quickly jumped in the car and we drove back to the branch. Inside the car were dozens of boxes of designer sneakers, hundreds of bootleg DVDs, and dozens of fake, designer purses. There were also drugs in the car. We had to call the police to report all of the items in the car. Really, we called about the drugs, but when the officer came the manager showed them everything. Around a month later, the renter came to the branch to ask if we'd taken the car and if his personal items could be returned. The manager took him into the office and nothing ended up happening. He just informed him they turned the items into the police because it was policy, not mentioning the drugs or obviously stolen and counterfeited items. While it all turned out okay, the rest of us in the branch were crapping bricks when the manager took him in the office. The dude who had driven him to the branch was sitting in there with us and we were all convinced we were about to get murdered. Not a car rental staff but hanging out with a friend who's about to leave on a long as road trip. We hear some racket outside and there's some random chick going all our public freak out on some dude car with a baseball bat. Busted off the mirrors. Broke out all the windows. Tail lights and headlights. Dents. The works. Fast forward about 3 hours and I'm driving my friend to the rental place so she can pick up a rental for her road trip and guess which car is also in the lot. Turns out. The guy whose car got all fricked up had just rented it to break up with his girl because he knew it wasn't going to go well and didn't want her to frick up his car. He got all the insurance and she got a felony vandalism charge. Frickin 200 like holy crap. But good on him for getting out of that. Oh man. Not a staff member. But this just happened to my wife and I. So we went to Hawaii for our 5th anniversary. Never got to take a honeymoon. So this was kind of a bit of both. We reserved a standard economy car from Fox, never ever rent from Fox, and they said, we upgraded you to this convertible. I asked them for the type of car I reserved, as the convertible had minimal luggage space. They kind of shrugged and went but it's an upgrade my wife was giving me the just freaking get the keys look, 
So I said great and signed for it. We drive around for a little bit and hit the beach and see some ants in the car. Figured maybe we picked up or parked on some ants. It's late so we head back to the room and sleep off the 8 hours of travel and lay over. The next morning, I see more ants. Then I turn on the air. Literally hundreds of ants come flooding out of the vents. There was a nest in the car. They lived there. I dropped my wife off at a coffee shop and returned the car immediately. They ended up giving me another convertible, which I didn't want. But when I told them about the colony, they said I mean, yep, that happens sometimes. I mean, yep, that happens sometimes. Well it freaking shouldn't. Clean the dang car. The strangest incident was a grey SUV that was returned with several bullet holes on the driver's side fender and door. The vehicle was driven in a slightly bad part of New York City when the incident occurred. I don't know what happened to the driver, but we totaled the rental. I also came across a lot of weed, phones, sunglasses and in one case, a Glock pistol. I was an assistant manager at Enterprise and I have plenty of disgusting vehicle stories but my favorite story is a bit different. I got to work at 6.30 in the morning to start prepping overnight dropped cars. Pulled the first car around to the wash bay and in the dead center was a steaming pile of human crap. After about 30 seconds of staring at it, a drunk, and maybe homeless, guy woke up in the bed of a Chevy Silverado, got out and walked away never to be seen again. Branch manager and I went through the tapes from the night before and saw him stumble into the bay, knock our vacuum over, take a dump in the middle then climb into the Chevy to go to sleep. Old roommate worked for U-Haul in the late 90s. He had a few stories but my favorite. Guy rented a 16 feet truck and went to business Costco. Apparently Guy owned a restaurant or two and loaded up on 5 gallon buckets of soy sauce and 50 pound bags of rice. Well he made it through the parking lot but when he turned onto the street his rear wheel went up on the sidewalk and when it came down the rear axle broke. He must have been going reasonably fast and forgot to secure any of his load. A lot of the buckets of soy sauce which were stacked four tall tipped over and flooded the back of the truck and street. The rice slowly expanded due to being covered in soy sauce and the fire department had to cut the back door open as it was wedged shut. This is one of those fuck ups that just keeps giving oh my. A friend of mine used to work for 6 to rent a car at an airport. Apparently after a 12 seater van was returned, the cleaning crew discovered a pile of crap in the seating row furthest back. They said it looked like an adult sized amount of human fecal. The customers who had rented it were charged with a $200 cleaning fee. That would be fine if the person cleaning it got the $200 bucks. Car cleaners of the world unite and mail all the crap to corporate. A buddy of mine is a detailer that contracts with a rental place. He sent me a picture once asking what was in this trash bag he'd found in the trunk of a recently returned vehicle. It was a 39 gallon garbage bag full of empty single dose suboxone packets. Vehicle had also been smoked in, which he said is pretty much impossible even for detailers to completely remove without replacing all of the upholstery. That's a lot of suboxone. A lot. Halt crap. I worked for a rental agency between 2010 and 2014. One time I had a tweaked out customer back his rental into the river. We had it towed out and when it was being detailed they found so much trash including piles of empty bath salts packaging. Another customer had Parkinson's and probably shouldn't have been driving to begin with. Within 10 seconds of pulling out of our lot he caused a 3 car accident. Yes he had the damage waiver, but he declined additional liability. Everyone was okay, but you could say they were shaken up. Last story for now. I had a guy return a car laughing because he hit a raccoon in his Yaris. He declined the damage waiver and had a $1000 deductible. He proceeded to our public freakout when I insisted I collect his deductible right then, which he did pay. The car ended up being totaled. I have a lot more stories about rental cars involving drive-bys, drugs, bank robberies, and even repossessing a rental car during a cookhouse bust. <laughs> Customer renting from Alamo in Vegas. Kia Optimas were the hot new car of the day. I remember almost taking the only one in the mid-size category, got in the car to drive away, and noticed the entire car smelled strongly of feet, like haven't changed your socks in two weeks feet. I really don't know how a car ends up smelling like that, but when we returned our Camry a week later, the fresh new dirty shoe Optima was still on the lot. 
Those cars had havoc issues where condensation would pool and mold in the AC system. They would commonly smell exactly as you described. Modern Toyotas have been having similar issues. I rent out my own cars on Turo. Think Airbnb for cars. One time someone brought the car back late by a few hours, which is a bit annoying but oh well. Upon return, I noticed the front bumper was damaged, like they may have gone way too fast over a speed bump or something. Again, mistakes happen, there's a process for repairing stuff like that via insurance. It was just annoying that they pretended not to notice it was there at all. The car was brought back very late at night so it was dark. Hard to inspect the interior well without sunlight. When I opened the door, it smelled very strongly of weed, like darn. At the time I thought it smelled like weed but didn't have the confidence to say that for sure because maybe it was just strong perfume or something. I don't smoke. They said they vacuumed the car before bringing it back, but it didn't look like it was particularly well vacuumed. Next day I do a proper inspection and take pictures for insurance etc. There was weed everywhere in the car. Yeah they vacuumed it, but there were small pieces on the floors, under the carpets, in between seats, and actual big pieces in the center compartment. My only theory is that they rented the car for drug transportation or selling purposes. But even then, it looked like there was a big weed explosion inside the car, which doesn't make sense. It took 3-4 weeks to get the smell out even after having the car detailed job. And I had to leave windows open as much as possible, leave a bunch of drying sheets all over the car, etc. Oh and that accident they had, cost over $4000 to repair. My only theory is that they rented the car for drug transportation or selling purposes. But even then, it looked like there was a big weed explosion inside the car, which doesn't make sense. If you are trafficking, you don't just throw it anywhere in the car. Sounds like they were just smoking and small pieces will drop when rolling blunts and whatnot. Not staff, but renter. A few years ago some friends of mine and I booked a few cabins in Costa Rican jungles of the Osa Peninsula one of the last parts of the country that is still undeveloped, as aside from a few remote villages. Most of the area is a national park nature preserve. We decided to rent a SUV in San Jose and drive it to and from the airport as a way to see some of the country. When I go to check out, they ask me if I want insurance on the car. Normally I always decline, but I was thinking. You know, since I'm staying in a part of this country that boasts no paved roads or electricity maybe I should get the insurance just this once. I sign all the paperwork get the keys, and the guy at the counter says, So, where are you staying I said in a village called Cabo Matapalo in the Osa Peninsula. He said Osa, we normally don't rent to people who are going there. That night as I was driving in, I understood why. After turning off the Pan American Highway we ended up on the dirt road that would take us through the national park to the coast where the villages are at night. It was just after the rainy season so there were a lot of big potholes, or whatever the washed out by rain equivalent is. We had to drive through three rivers, which were more shallow creeks this time of year, and at times had a hard time determining what was the road and what was just a hiking trail. They were all the road. I should also mention at this point, that I tried relentlessly to get a Jeep Wrangler, as having that would have made this trip a blast, but apparently I was told that Toyota controlled all the rental agencies, so the best I could get was a RAV4. This car was a piece of crap. Halfway through the drive through the jungle trail out suspension blew out. By the time we got to camp our muffler was dragging. We rigged it with a coat hanger for the return drive. A few nicks and scratches from trees. On the side of the road we flat out beat the crap out of this car. The return drive was uneventful since it was daylight in the worst parts of the drive. But let me tell you. When I returned the car and they said, Oh you got insurance you are all set I ran out of there before they could change their mind. Smart. You said oh sir. They gave you the beta. Insurance fixed it back up. There was a regular customer who kept smoking in his rentals. It was an automatic $250 charge. Eventually my manager refused to rent to him anymore. My manager tried for a company wide DNR. Do not rent. But never got the approval. Dude rents a truck from a branch 3 hours away. When his return date comes. He doesn't return the truck. The rental branch cannot contact him and the truck goes missing for 3 weeks. Eventually he drops the truck at our branch overnight. When we open the branch the next morning we find the truck with a flat tire. 
side mirror hanging off, cracked windows, scratched paint, and the back seat covered in dog fur. My manager finally for the approval for his DNR. I sell cars, so not quite the same, but we see our fair share of nightmare trade-ins and the occasional repossession. This one couple came in around November of last year, and were just some of the dirtiest people you had ever seen. I don't say this to be mean, they were truly nasty, you could smell them from the other side of the dealership, literal dirt cake to their clothes. What I'm driving at is that there is no way these people would be able to get financed on the vehicle they wanted. Well a very stinky 4 hours in the dealership later, much to everyone's surprise, they were leaving in a fully loaded minivan. As it turns out, none of our suspicions about their ability to pay their bills were incorrect and 3 weeks later the van had been repossessed. In 3 weeks, these lovely individuals had managed to make this vehicle unsellable. It was disgusting. Pee and crap on the walls. Tobacco ground into the carpet. Half of the dash melted. FFS these people used power tools to remove the backseat from the van to sleep in it. The tech who took the repo had to wear a mask to drive it a block away into our overflow lot. Their deficiency balance. What is owed after the value of the vehicle versus the loan amount was $16,000. Which essentially means they caused around $10,000 worth of damage and evaluation after only 3 weeks. Don't do drugs kids, and if you're going to do drugs, don't finance $40k vans while doing them. Obligatory not the rental staff but, a group of us were in Nevada testing anti-tank missiles. So we were driving our 80s rental cars off road a lot. Strictly fair bottom per the contract but what the heck. And there was a cool dry lake but near the range. So of course it was our own racetrack. Woo woo. -woo. Until a thunderstorm the night before dropped a nice boulder off the cliff into the racetrack. And the dude driving didn't see it. 110 miles per hour right over the rock. Crunch. Crunch. Bam. And the car just gasped and quit. Rolling to a stop. Radiator. Big hole. Oil pan. Ripped off. Transmission pan. Torn open. Muffler torn off. Rear differential ripped open. Gas tank leaking. And every bit of life giving fluid drained out. We got the range guys to tow it to the state road. Along with the rock. Put the rock on the shoulder. Poured a trail of fluids from it to the car. And called the rental agency. They took the car. Insurance covered it. But they were very suspicious. Working return lane at a big airport for Enterprise. I was helping a customer unload some bags from the back of a rental SUV. Their chihuahua bit me. That breed is small but evil. Summer MT intern at Enterprise butthole customer makes my APM cry and she ended up quitting. Comes back to return the car few days later. Ash everywhere. Car is super smoky. I come back and say the car smells like smoke. Which means a $250 detail fee by the cast. He starts screaming and we go to check the car. Find a deodorizer bottle. He says we planted it there and that I need to work on my customer service skills because I'm not being respectful. Literally doing my job notifying him that the car smells like smoke. Called corporate and he's banned from enterprise. A very good friend of mine is an auditor for E-Prize and I get a call one day Jay. Can you dispose some bullets for me? I have a firearms company. Sure. Where did you get bullets from? Well, we have acquired a bunch from rental returns and nobody knows what to do with them so I met up with her later that week and picked up a nice box of various bullets from people leaving them in their rentals. Most of the runs have been disposed of properly at the gun range. I was a customer. Rented a beautiful car for a trip. It was covered in crumbs and the steering wheel felt greasy. I asked them to go back over it. I still found a 2 liter coke bottle and crumbs in the seat. Shifter and that nut sack around the e-brake. Gross customer and lazy staff. This reads like a 2 star Yelp review. Two good ones for ya. First, someone returned a car after month of having it cause of their vehicle being destroyed or something and insurance was footing the bill for the Ford rental. It came back with a couple used diapers and the backseat cuff holders and fast food wrappers lodged hard under the seats with a few butts and roaches in the floorboards. It took a solid week and a half to clean to be semi-decent after. It was never the same. Second, my supervisor got a call from someone. The company also detailed cars. So not necessarily a rental story, but, the customer wanted us to clean up a SUV that someone had turned the gun on themselves in. He just hung up, 
FFS. My branch has a satellite location in a local Ford dealership service department. Customer P off with Ford's customer service comes up to the enterprise desk to get his car rental. It's freaking Ford. I would be way more P if I wasn't so stoned right now. Um. Not really a horror story for me because I got used to it but someone will probably enjoy it. I worked for Enterprise in a small Appalachian county that had a M lab problem. As in 40 M lab busts between the 1st of January and the 1st of September one year kind of problem. In the wash bay, we had a poster up of how to identify a shake and bake or one pot M lab, made from empty 2 liter bottles. And what to do if we encountered one because people who make M rented our cars and left all their M. Making stuff in the trunk. Had to call the police a couple of times due to finding those, or other stuff like handguns, in cars. I worked as a production manager for a car rental company in Florida back in the early 90s. One couple who had a 2 year old baby with them on vacation ran a light and got t-boned pretty hard. The mother and father banged heads together from the force of the impact and passed away. The baby in the back seat was fine. Eventually the car was returned to us. I don't want to describe what it looked like inside. I was a young man back then and I remember being devastated at the idea the child was orphaned and never knew his parents. Still gives me the chills to this day. Word I heard was the other driver only cared about when the insurance was going to pay to fix his car. I also remember another creepy story told to me by a manager who transferred from a location in New Jersey. Apparently someone got murdered during the winter and their body was put into the trunk. When the car was returned and warmer weather hit, everything began melting and blood dripped out of the back. Second hand story so I don't know how true that one was. But who knew being in the rental car business could be so horrific? As for the first story I can see that being a coping mechanism about the insurance thing. The man while at no fault of his just killed two people and orphaned a kid. Sometimes people just need to focus on something else while their brain processes what happened. I don't know if it helped at all to think the guy was just grieving in his own way. Customer story. Rented a convertible. Camaro. It doesn't matter for the story. Out in Hawaii for a week. Wife and I were having a great time, and were using the car extensively coahu. End of day 2. We come out from dinner and she thought she saw something move on the seat. We take a look, but it's kinda dark and didn't see anything. Next morning I pop the top and look around more, and it turns out that the car was infested with cockroaches. Freaked out and drove back to the airport and swapped the car out. It was pretty disgusting having had our bags and food in there. In hindsight I could see that being a big problem in a climate like that. Especially with customers dropping crumbs and stuff all the time. Oh man that's just the Hawaiian state bird. I worked for a company that was not Hertz for a short period of time. A lady came in and that she spilled her coffee and would be happy to clean it up if I gave her some cleaning stuff. We had a pretty strict policy of no customers in the shop. Liability. So I said I could do it. The car sat with the windows down for a while outside in the summer heat. So it dried out. When I went to scrub it, the smell we reactivated and it was most assuredly not coffee. It was some sort of vaginal anal secretion possibly mixed with pee. I was gagging with my eyes watering while trying to clean it. Not worth $12 HR. Well, at least she tried to clean it up herself. Okay not a rental place but I work for a luxury dealership. This one guy returned a loaner vehicle with bullet holes that went through the entirety of the vehicle. Like, entered from the rear and made it up through the center console and front seats. The interior covered in footprints and dirt. And it reeked of weed. Though that alone is nothing super new. It found a couple shells on the floor. Cops had to be called. Guy was obviously like, I have no idea where those came from. Wasn't me. This isn't far from Baltimore City. So you know, draw your own conclusions. The worst I had wasn't that bad but I finally found a thread about something I work in so I'm gonna share. I work at a small local rental company. Mostly serves a specific community in the area and collision shops owned by people in the community. I've only been here for less than one year and I've had so many people just not pay and or not return for months. Some people bring back cars. Especially minivans. Dirtier than I could have made my car if I didn't clean it for 5 years. The most horrible thing I can remember now was the time I was doing the regular check. The exterior. 
for any damages. When I finish that I get in the car to check where the miles and gas are up to and move it in. First thing I realize is that the car smells of actual crap. I get out of the car, finish up with the customer, charge the card, and he leaves. I go back to the car to move it into the lot but as I'm getting in I see actual crap on the carpet by the driver's seat. By the look and smell of it, it was probably human crap. The customers here definitely wouldn't own any pets. It was probably the first month of working here and I really didn't know what to do. I just remember being so grossed out I got my co-worker to help me. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.